it's one of the most difficult things for us to do, is to look back instead of just simply look at ourselves at the end of the race. I just did a memorial service for Doug McMillan, a gentleman that has been attending our church for about two years with another woman. Uh, they've been dating Sherry Wall. And he passed away last Sunday about 12.30 after our Sunday service. They were riding bikes down the Strand Road right by our service and decided, we're not going to go to church today, we're just going to go for a long ride. And by the time they got to Marina Del Rey, he had collapsed and died of a massive heart attack at 50 years of age. Born in 1961, graduated USC, helped recolonize the Lambda Chi, a wonderful fraternity at USC, and left behind a lot of friends, family, and a future with this potential new wife, Sherry, and... Uh, the memorial service was held yesterday, and I led it, and I didn't have to say much because people, one guy after another, after another, after another, gal as well, spoke of his influence in the lives of young people, marginalized young people that have lived in poverty, young kids, that he has started a, a foundation and has been part of an organization that has helped bring them up and out given them a hope and given them a future. Doug poured his life into young people. That's what he did. So what he leaves behind, he's over. His life is over. And he just began searching for God just about a year ago. Joined Price and Gina's small group, their grounded group. And Ed, Millie, Lassiter were part of that group. And they spoke of his life and spoke of his journey and desire to learn. And he said, I'm not a believer, but I'm open and I'm learning and I'm growing and I want to know this guy. And now his life is over, and yet his legacy lives on because all of these people attested to a man who poured himself into others. Now the question is, how did Elijah do that, and how should we do that? And I wrote down four words. The first word is mentor. See, in 1 Kings chapter 19, 